This is a Gear Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Mr. Perez. And you're listening to the Better Live Than Dead podcast brought to you exclusively on Gear Network. Listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of the Better Live Than Dead podcast, heard exclusively on the Gear Radio Network. I am your host, Ryan Wolf, flying solo this week in the intro, but not to fear. Mr. Perez is here. He will join us next segment. And now, uh, before we head to that interview, I do want to let you know, give you a little bit of a teaser on what we're talking about this week. As you may know, late this week, Cleveland Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon's one-year suspension for his substance abuse violation was upheld by the National Football League. Is the NFL drug policy outdated? Does it need changes? Find out what Perez and I think after the break. While you're listening to this podcast, make sure you follow us on social media. You can follow me at WolfSHC on Twitter. You can also follow Mr. Perez at MRLG Perez. Make sure to like the podcast on Facebook. That's facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast. And make sure to follow Gear Network on Twitter at GERE Network. A successful product does not become a successful product on its own. Look at the Gear Radio Network, for example. We're a prime example. We had a lot of help getting here, and we can help you get where you want to go, too. Advertising rates are very low to start off here on the Gear Radio Network. Visit us at gearnetwork.com. Click on the contact link to send us an email, and we can work out the details. Again, advertise your product across all of the forums at a low, low rate here on the Gear Radio Network. You are listening to Better Live and Dead with Brian Wolf, exclusively here on the Gear Radio Network. Welcome back to the Better Live Than Dead podcast. I am your host, Ryan Wolf, joined by my co-host who was on the line this uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Perez. Say hello to the people. Hello, peoples. How See, now we, we, we got a different entrance for you. Instead of ladies and gentlemen, we got you saying hello, peoples. It's a, it's a good day. Yeah, but, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, I got to get used to that because I'm so used to saying, ladies and gentlemen... It's your boy Perez. That you know that that was at the beginning. So gotta come up with something new. I think I'm going to hello, peoples. We can just keep saying, ladies and gentlemen, and see how many times we can say it in one podcast before people just lose their minds. <laughs> yeah, right. That'd be hilarious. Now, uh, Perez, obviously, you know what we're talking about, and the people listening should know. But if not, I'm going to refresh your memory. the uh, The National Football League yesterday, or not yesterday, I should say on on Thursday upheld uh, a one-year suspension uh, for Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon after his third violation of the league's substance abuse policy. Uh, now, just to look at a little bit of a background on Josh Gordon, he is no stranger to getting in trouble. Uh, in 2010, nope, he was at, he was at, in 2010 at Baylor, uh, he was suspended after there was marijuana found in a car that he was in. It was not his, but apparently it wasn't his, but he was still suspended. Uh, July 2011, he was suspended indefinitely. Uh, and kicked off the Baylor football team, ended up transferring to Utah uh, to, to try to join the supplemental draft in 2011. Uh, did not work. Ended up going in the 2012 supplemental draft where he was drafted by the Browns. Ended up being suspended four games in 2012, which uh, was talked down to a two-game suspension. Uh, but he lost four game checks for substance abuse again. Uh, and as we mentioned, uh, this was a, a failed drug test for marijuana. Uh, I'm going to throw some scientific facts at you right now, Perez. I hope you're ready, but we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll get it broken down here. I'm just, like I said, just doing an overview. Uh, okay. this test, this test, uh, since he's in the, the third stage of the drug program, he has to pass up to 10 tests per month prior to this test failure. Uh, there were reports that he had passed over 70 tests. Now, the, the failed A test, because when you, when you take a drug test, it's split into two tests, so they can test both of them. It's the same, it's the same urine. Uh, but the failed A test came in at 16 nanograms per millimeter. The B test came in at 13.6 nanograms per millimeter, while the NFL's uh, limit is 15 nanograms per millimeter. Now, first off, before we uh, break into the scientific talk, Perez, what are your thoughts on this uh, ongoing situation with Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon? Well, you know, listen, obviously he's got a past of getting in trouble. So it's difficult because 
to me, a year seems a little excessive. While I get he's been in trouble three times, previously, a, a year is still a long time to mess with a dude's livelihood. So I, I can tell you exactly what happened. Would you like to know the truth of the situation? I'm listening, man. I'm going to tell you the truth of the situation. See, he called me. He called me and said, Perez, here's the deal. I was looking at my quarterback charts, and nobody on the quarterback roster is going to be able to throw the ball to me. So I figured I'd take a year off. But come on, you've got Johnny Mansell and Hoyer. I mean, that's where's he going with that? He's he, Brown is an elite wide receiver. He's got no one to throw the ball. So you know what? I probably would have smoked some weed, too. Perez, are you failing to forget last season he he did have 87 <laughs> catches for 1,600 yards? He set, all, hey, he set all sorts of Cleveland Brown records last season. But but here's the deal. I didn't want. I don't want to harp on that. Right, but he had someone throwing him the ball last year. Well, here's the deal. This I don't want He doesn't have any point. I'll tell you what. Just just a quick just a quick note. Brian Hoyer, he's the truth. He's going to be good for him. They may not win a lot of games, but he'll be good for him. Uh, but I, here's the deal. I don't want to harp on the Josh Gordon situation uh, because it is kind of a. It, it seems very shut and dry. Or, or, or cut and dry, open and shut. I'm getting all my my words mixed up today. Uh, okay, that seems very very. You know, he he did his, he did the crime. You got to do the time. What I want to talk about is is the is the National Football League stance on on marijuana use fair? Because no. you, you look at well, first off, you look at the 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 allowance is 15 nanograms per millimeter. Now, mind you. Uh, the World Anti-Doping Agency, who tests Olympic athletes, they had their threshold at 15, same as the NFL. They just, uh, I believe a few months ago, raised their threshold from 15 to 150 uh, nanograms per millimeter. And like I said, they test the Olympic athletes, and the World Anti-Doping Asso- or Agency uh, is, is adopted. Their rules are adopted by almost over 600 sports organizations. So their their words uh, have some weight. Yeah, and you have the, you have the NFL. You have the NFL sitting around, like I said, still at fifteen. Yeah, that's true. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. Let me ask. Let me ask you a question. Give me your opinion on something. Do you think it's fair that this dude got one year suspension for lighting up a leaf, and yet, and yet? Bryce got one game for knocking out a female. Well, a, I, I understand that. What is the that. NFL saying there? The NFL uh, right there is saying it's better for you to be involved in domestic violence than to smoke some weed. And unfortunately, that, my it's, friend, is messed up. Unfortunately, right now, that's that's that would be us comparing apples to oranges. <laughs> while I do I'm agree with saying, you, well, no, no. While I do, press, I do agree with you wholeheartedly. The NFL is very, very screwed up in their uh, disciplinary system. Uh, I I do know... You you and I, you and I can get on the elevator, and I can knock you out, and then when we get to the floor, I can drag you off, but... I know if you if, if, if you or I did that to to a, a woman, which I obviously both know we never would do that. Uh, we would lose a year, we would lose a year of our lives. We'd we'd be in jail for a year at least. At least. But, but this guy gets two games. I understand that that's 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 kind of a different topic for a different day. But that's that's a good that's, actually, right. that's, a, that's a good that's it's a good way to highlight that the NFL is very screwed up in their um in their uh suspension. Uh, right. suspensions they just they don't seem to have a lock on it well it, nope. it's interesting because because you read articles about the the marijuana usage in the national football league and there are a lot of people who smoke marijuana in the national football league as i said uh 15 nanograms per millimeter i mean that still means that you can still have some sort some traces of uh, of it in your system as long as you pass the test you're fine right uh, yeah, but you thing, get that just from hanging out with your friends or smoking the, weed. The thing I look at is uh, the NHL doesn't doesn't consider uh, marijuana among among banned substances. 
the National Basketball Association, you have to fail four drug tests for marijuana, four, before they suspend you for five games. And then after that, every subsequent failure is five more games. But I can't remember the last time somebody got to to the five game suspension, unless I'm just not paying attention. Uh, in major league, in major league baseball, this is actually interesting because uh, there was an article on Yahoo Sports a couple months ago. And if you get a minute, you you Perez and everyone else listening, I suggest that you uh, you go take a take a minute and read it. Essentially, it's a, a player smoked his way onto the 40-man roster. And now, by, by smoking his way onto the 40-man roster, I mean because the Major League Baseball Players Association does not represent minor league players, uh, you can be suspended for marijuana use in the minors. But once you make it onto the 40-man roster and you are a part of the MLBPA, uh, you cannot be suspended for marijuana use. You can only be fined. And those fines are roughly about $35,000, according to the article. And that's coming direct from a player. So you, you look at the NHL, the NBA, and MLB, and say to yourself, we're in a different age. We have, we have states that legally allow uh, the possession and consumption of marijuana Yet we are still uh, in the NFL treating it like it's the you know the the, the Stone Age, if you will, uh, in suspending players for uh, full seasons. I mean, if if this was if you told me uh, Josh Gordon's first uh, offense was a fine, okay. Second one was uh, two games, okay. The third one is four games, okay. But if you're telling me the third time he fails a drug test, and like we said, it was a marginal, he marginally failed the test. I understand a failure is a failure, but when one comes back at 60, one comes back at 13.6, and 15 is the limit, and you're going to kick him out for a year? A year. That just that just seems outrageous to me. Oh, completely outrageous. And And, and the sad part is, there's no, like, oversight board that does that. It's completely up to the moderator to, to set these limits on, who, on how you get suspended. Well, like I, like so, I said, it's, it's you know, they, they go by the World Anti-Doping Agency. I, mean, I understand it's the, the, I believe it's the USADA, which is responsible for implementing the World Anti-Doping Agency's uh, code throughout North American sports. But right. You look at, and, and the NFL has really dealt themselves a, a black eye and, and got themselves in a, in a bit of a pickle because you've got people flat out saying, like, uh, I was just doing You've got research. people giving people black eyes and getting blessed. Well, I was doing research last night for this, and, and when you have national sports writers that are saying the NFL is, is trying to cut down on the uh, illegal, or not the illegal, but the, the uh, anti-inflammatories, the painkillers, the pills, the shots, because they are killing full players. Like we know that for a fact because there have been players who've taken the pills that it is, it's some up and, and they've said it and they've you know studies have been done after they passed away and, and, and they found out that it's messed the players up. So players are going the players in the new day and age are going to different ways to self medicate. They're smoking more marijuana. Yeah, and, and, and you it, know what? It, if it's not doing the same things, let them. I don't. You know, I'm not a proponent of it. I don't say you should do it, but. If you can do it and not get killed and sort of ease the pain, you know, I got no issues with that. These guys play one of the toughest sports. They get beat up from the ages of nine until they retire, basically, if you you move on to the next levels. And you're going to have those aches and pains. So I get it. And just looking uh, looking back at my sheet here, the NFL – I don't even need to ask you. I had a question on here highlighted. Does the NFL need to revamp their marijuana policy? But I think you and I both agree. Uh, the time is not even now. The time is like last week. They should have done this. They've been talking about it for a while. But the problem is uh, back when they signed the, the most recent co- collective bargaining agreement, and, and again, this is a thing that is collectively bargained. It's not something that they can just show up on a Monday and say, you know what, we really want to lower that. or really want to raise it, I should say. It's something that has to be uh, discussed in a room with uh, with lawyers uh, and with very important football people, and uh, it, it certainly appears that the the pendulum is swinging in the way of of, of raising the threshold, uh, which would you know cause guys like Josh Gordon to not be suspended for recreational marijuana use. Uh, 
but the thing that's interesting to me is that they've the the talks are they they dump down the marijuana uh, suspensions and they and they raise the threshold in exchange for tougher uh, HGH testing. Now that's that's interesting to me because in a sport where marijuana is almost illegal, where if you even are around people who are smoking it and it gets in your system that way uh, and it raises your levels, you can be suspended. But if you're using human growth hormone and you can get away with it, you're totally fine. It seems to me as if the NFL is one of the biggest hypocrites uh, out there these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, I've said it before. I call them the no fun league because they keep taking away stuff from, you know, that I find you know, amusing. But when it comes to this type of thing, do you need a drug policy? Absolutely. You need one. Is the drug policy you currently have kind of ridiculous? Absolutely. It is. So it does need to be reworked. I just find it, like, I just find I, I I just find it real interesting because uh, the one thing the NFL refuses to do is blood testing, and then what does blood testing do? Blood testing gives away every single thing that's in your body. Right. So if there are guys First that are of all, even, let, let me just say this: if you have some of the biggest dudes on the planet playing this sport, and you're having them take like hip and core hormone, and you know a lot of them probably shoot steroids or something type of another. You want them smoking that weed just to relax them. Those dudes are monsters. You don't want them upset on the general public every day. The uh, the the one thing I was just looking up here while you were while you were talking is that uh, if anything, the NFL should want to be like Major League Baseball in, in terms of their of their testing, where. Uh, you find players for, for using marijuana. I mean, if, if you test positive for, for marijuana before or after a game, if your levels are increased, yeah, you should be suspended. There's no doubt about it. But if it's a Tuesday afternoon and they come in to drug test you and you've got some in your, you got some marijuana in your system because, oh, you, you, you took a you, you're beating over the weekend and you, you need your body to relax and you want to feel better, there should be no problem with that. Just, you know, I implement 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 some sort of system, and then again, like I said, with the blood testing, Major League Baseball has implemented it this season, where uh, where they're, they're trying to to deter human growth hormone, which is seen as a major issue, um, but it also picks up everything else, like I said, and, and that's what you want. I mean, you want to be able to find out, okay, is this guy uh, using HG is using steroids. Is he using this, this, or that? It, it's a clear picture, and it, it, it makes a level playing field for everybody. I mean, like well, I said, I that's, that's a different conversation for a different day. I agree because I, I can say a lot about that human growth hormone, but I won't. Hey, you can say what you want, man. We got we have an open we have an open forum right now. No, no, I'm just saying. Listen, they have to be careful. I understand completely why they want to test and ban human growth hormone because you're talking about the most elite, uh, I'm sorry, the, the most elite athletes on the planet taking this stuff. And if you're anything like my favorite player ever in the history of sports, Alex Rodriguez, if you start taking this stuff, you become a worse player. He's the only dude in the history of sports to ever take steroids to become a worse player. Well, I completely understand what he want to ban this stuff. Well, that's uh, that's he, he took the steroids and became worse because he took so many steroids before that his body started to break down. He was about thirty two years old, so he had to implement more steroid usage, which just sped the process up. Right. So see, see, it's it's falling dominoes. I get exactly. why these it's, leagues it's, don't want people to do it. They want. They want players to be healthier. They want players to. Uh, they, they've they've implemented better better uh, concussion regulations. Uh, they've they've tried to make the game safer. I mean, for better or for worse, they've tried to make the game safer, where you can almost not touch uh, a wide receiver after I think five yards. If you do, you're going to get a penalty. I know this year they've implemented. They've they've implemented oh some. God. They they've implemented more rules to try to make the game faster. 
but it, it's looking like the games are going to be longer this season because of the amount of flags, at least in the preseason, the amount of flags that have been flying. It looks like we may be in for a, a very long football season. But, um, excuse me, the now, one thing... Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the whole point was to try to stop the person from getting into the end zone to score points on you. That is true. Right? That is true. Isn't that the whole point? Correct. Well, it's reached, so, it's reached, to, to go off on a tangent, it, it's reached the point where the NFL is a, a passing league. Uh, quarterbacks are what bring the fans. You know, the ladies, like they say, used to say in baseball, chicks dig the long ball, chicks dig the touchdown in the uh, – the 5,000 yard the season. And- yep. So, you know, in, in, in with the superstar wide receivers, you know, you don't want to see them getting hit high, get hit low and uh, get mugged uh, just for, uh, just for a sports center highlight. They want it. They want to see a lot of shootouts. They want to see, you know, the, the 40 to 37 games, stuff like that. They don't, they, while the defensive battles are nice here and there, they don't want to see those every, every day. So it, it, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But not really, dude. Not really. Not really, because this sport has been popular forever. And it, it keeps growing in popularity, sure, so they keep making these stupid rules. But at the same token, you're now handicapping the defense. And, and, and when you handicap the defense, let me tell you something. People will get real bored real quick if all you see are shootouts. People want to see defensive stops. People want to see that grinding. People want to see the big hits. You know, last year when they banned the running back from being able to lower his shoulders, I thought that was one of the most ridiculous rules I ever heard of. And it still is. But now you're just handicapping the defense, and it's stupid. Well, hey, real quick before you, before you, before we wrap this up, I just want to ask you, uh, who are the biggest superstars in football now? Quarterbacks. That's right. That's true. You've got to protect the quarterbacks, and if it means if it means putting more regulations so you can't touch a quarterback, putting more rules in so you have to so you can protect the wide receivers and, and make all that stuff uh, safer, then you do that. I mean, there are some guys out there who are trying to to make it about themselves, and they'll go for uh they'll, they'll lower their head into other guy's head when he comes across the middle, and, and a guy like Brandon Merriweather comes to mind, uh, where he takes it into his own hands and just tries to purposely destroy a guy because he wants to uh, teach him a lesson. Guys like that, I understand the new rules, but when it's like uh, you've got a, a wide receiver going down on a, on a a fade route, you jump up to go with the ball and you tap him just ever so slightly, you get called for pass interference. Yeah. That's yeah, so stupid. Because the whole point of trying, you know, I mean, obviously I get it. Wide receivers in the middle of the route, you can't stop them there. You got to give them the opportunity to try to get the ball. But at the same token, if you get, you know, if the ball is in his hand and you can stop him from doing this, you should be able to hit him right back. I agree. I, I agree with you. And, and you know what? We're going to have a fun, we'll have a fun talk about this during the season because I do definitely want to see how. Uh, the rules translate to the regular season games because we know a lot, the, a lot of stuff these past couple of years, they've tried a lot of stuff in the preseason to see how it works out. And then they kind of uh, relax during the season. You know, if, if the NFL realizes, Hey, you're calling a lot of defensive holding, relax on that. Just, just if it's, if it's not blatant, don't call it. But if it is obviously, you know, throw the flag because they don't want, they do not want games going three hours. Like they, they want, quick, clean, entertaining game. They don't want it, you know, 20-minute reviews, uh, penalties everywhere, all that. They don't want that. They want a clean game. They want the fans to be entertained. They want to keep the fans' interest. And while we all do love football, Perez, uh, if you're going to tell me that you're going to be interested in a game where there's, you know, 25 penalties, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to tell you you're, you're crazy. You know, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that at all. No one's interested in that. That's why, like, in two seasons, they're going to start complimenting flags on everybody. It's going to become flag football. Two-hand touch. Too ridiculous. They keep maybe maybe for rules. the... Uh, if I remember correctly, you like the Cowboys, right? I do. Maybe for the sake of the Cowboys' defense, they'll implement two-hand touch because that defense is dog crap. 
Oh, dude, that's, that defense is terrible. <laughs> you see, but at the same token, we talked about we talked about having to get into a shootout. That's what you're going to have to do this year. They're going to have to get into shootouts, and they're going to have to be, you know, the ones that have the best shootouts because that defense is horrid. It's going to be a oh, yeah. very long year for Cowboys fans. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, guess what? I want you to keep your football thoughts to yourself because I think I've got a, a plan up my sleeve for next week. I don't want to reveal my cards yet, but I think I've got a very good plan for next week's podcast. So uh, keep an eye out for that, people in uh, Radio Land. Good. Also, also, uh, Perez, if you would like to stick around for a few more minutes, I'm going to send it to break right now. But are you good to stick around for a few more minutes? Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I said it again. There's the uh, the third or fourth or fifth time we've said it in this podcast. Already. We will be back, Perez and myself, right after these commercial breaks. Wrestling fans, this is JC Money here, and I want to talk wrestling with you. That's right. I want to talk WWE with you. I want to talk indies with you. I want to talk WWE 2K video games. I want to talk anything wrestling with you because we are talking wrestling with JC Money. Thursdays on the Gear Radio Network. This free and independent sportscast is made possible when you shop the Gear Network store through Amazon. Visit GearNetwork.com and click on the Amazon banner to shop through Amazon's thousands of products at great prices delivered right to your front door. Again, that's GearNetwork.com and click the Amazon banner at the top. This is Joe Yurden from Pro Hockey Talk at NHL.com. You're listening to Better Live Than Dead on the Gear Network. And welcome back to Better Live Than Dead. It's Ryan Wolf here with uh, Mr. Perez on the line. And I, uh, and I and I wanted to. Uh, you're adjusting well to your to your new uh, to your new entrances. I I have to say. Thank you very much. That's right. Before we wrap up this podcast this week, I first want to say, um, Perez, you and I both are in agreement. The NFL needs to loosen up their marijuana policy. Correct. Yes. Okay. I know we kind of went off track last uh, last segment. Ended up poking some fun at your Dallas Cowboys, but uh, being a Bills fan, That's I know right. I can. Being a Bills fan, I know I have to get all my shots in before the season starts because once the season starts, I just keep my mouth shut. That's a true story because at least we have a quarterback. Hey, I think we got a quarterback, but it, he might not be good for a couple more years. Who knows? The you have someone be... in the pocket that gets the ball. I don't know if he's a quarterback, <laughs> but you, this... you have someone in that position. Say this team so, may not this team may not even uh, may not even be around in a couple of years. So we'll uh, we'll have to see as that plays out. So real quick, we were talking about Josh Gordon, correct? Right, and and you had said something before the podcast actually started that he was going to try to go uh, play in the CFL. That is correct. Well, it's not going to happen because the CFL has a league that if you're under contract for the NFL, they cannot sign you. If the Cleveland so, Browns, if the Cleveland Browns clear him to play, I believe he can see CFL. Uh, according to what I just saw, new. This is a developing. Be, this is say this is a developing story, ladies and gentlemen. So I just uh, we are just picking stuff up off of Twitter, and uh, I'm honestly that, that, is, that, is, that is that is a, a good uh, a good thing to bring up. Yeah, he's going to be stuck for a year. Oh no, you're right. You are right. That was quick. That took it took 27 minutes. Uh, ESPN's Chris Mortensen tweeted that um, Josh Gordon's exploring the possibility of playing for the rest of the year in the CFL. Sources and ten, then 27 minutes later, it said uh, CFL officials says league rules prohibit a suspended player like Josh Gordon who's under contract from playing in the CFL. Uh, then it says the CFL made league. Made, quote, made a mistake and closed the uh, loophole that enabled Ricky Williams to play for Toronto under suspension. So Josh Gordon is back to the drawing board. Uh, and the worst part well, is... You know, he, well, what's the worst part? Oh, you're okay. The worst part is uh, he's suspended for a year and has to apply for reinstatement as if he did something horribly wrong. <laughs> it, yes, yes, yes. We had... Had... We have a guy who he's he no weed. I, I mean, again, it's, like it's I, said, I don't. I'm not a proponent. I'm not saying you should do it. There was a study that came out recently that said uh, continual use of recreational marijuana will make you stupider. Now, here's the thing: I found it funny that they need to do a study for that because we all know potheads 
who when you walk away from him go, wow, that dude is stupid. Everybody knew that before in the studies, but they had to do a study. They still go to some pothead friends. But anyway... It- it's gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be great because again it's apples to oranges it's it's comparing the the Ray Rice suspension to the Josh Gordon suspension, but if the NFL has any issue letting Josh Gordon back in the league, I understand the guy's got problems. But if anything, he needs some structure in his life at this point. Uh, so if you don't let him come back to the league or give him a hard time, I'll just point you to Michael Vick and say, hey, right, uh, this man went to federal prison for killing dogs and in, in, in uh, putting together a dog fighting ring. And you let him. You opened uh, the doors with open arms, and actually tried to put him on the Buffalo Bills, or sorry, swayed him to the Philadelphia Eagles away from the Buffalo Bills because, quote, that's what you thought was best for him. So if you're going to tell me that you won't let Josh Gordon, one of the most exciting wide receivers we've seen in years, uh, young wide receivers, because obviously we know Calvin Johnson, Jimmy Graham, uh, AJ Green, Des Bryant, the list goes on. Uh, but this kid is, is quite exciting to watch. Uh, and you're telling me in a league where ratings do matter and ratings do put cash in your pockets, Roger Goodell, uh, if you're telling me you're not going to let Josh Gordon back in the league because he smoked some pot, uh, you might lose a few fans. Hey, and you know what? They suspended Dante Stallworth back in the day for a full season, not for marijuana use, but for running a person over and killing him when he was drunk driving. He got suspended a full season. I, I you almost tell me this is the same thing. I almost feel like the NFL needs an independent agency to to uh, to police the game, to to police the the off the field. You know, if you get arrested for drunk driving, you get arrested for uh, you know drug uh, possession. Uh, like for instance, perfect example. There's another guy, Josh Brent. He uh, the, it just popped into my head. Actually, I was just I was just reading about it this morning. He retired from football for a year while he was in jail for uh, for killing uh, a teammate, drunk driving. He he was completely wasted. Uh, what, they both played for the Cowboys. He got uh, in an accident and killed yeah. his teammate. Uh, but he wants to, he he's applying for reinstatement now. He could be reinstated, uh, but no one knows if he'll be suspended because right. he took the because he took the year off from football. Right. While if he gets while if he. Uh, if he doesn't get suspended, that may be a new way for players who get in serious trouble to just leave the game for a year or so and then come back. Say, I've done my debt to society. I paid my debt to society. Now it's time for me to come back and play football again. And I mean, I don't have a problem with the guy coming back. You know, everyone in life screws up and makes mistakes. I mean, you know, some worse than others, obviously, but as long as you pay your debt to society in, in, um, I, I guess do the crime, do the time, if you will. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say the guy's my favorite player because, you know, he's obviously not, but uh, you should be allowed to, to come back and, and, and play football again. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, I mean, you know, I feel this whole thing is this. Dante Starworth killed a dude, ran him over. He spent, he spent 30 days in jail. 30. Isn't it and it isn't crazy back then? Sorry to cut you off, Perez, but isn't it crazy back then when it happened, and they said he's suspended for a year, and we thought that was nuts because that's no, how I the NFL works, was, right? But I, I thought he should have been suspended longer. Absolutely, but that's what I'm saying is that when when a guy gets right. suspended, when when we see a guy get suspended, and you're like like when Ray Rice got suspended two games, you're like really only two games, or then Josh Gordon gets suspended a year, and you say really, you can't right. even like you I, know I, what? I mean. Dante Stallworth spent 30 days in jail. Michael Vick spent two and a half years in jail. We're killing dogs. I listen, think I love my dog. I love my dog. You kill my dog, I'm, I'm going to hurt you. Boy, is, I is a dog's life. Well, I appreciate that. Is a dog's life more important than a human's life? That's for other people to debate. I'm not going to piss off the animal rights activists who are listening to this. I'm just saying, Josh Gordon smokes some weed. He's gone for a year. Killed a dude, gone for a year. Knocked out my girlfriend, suspended for two games. Not to mention they got they got not to mention they got married in like a in like a flash wedding, so uh, she couldn't testify against him, so he wouldn't go to jail. There's there's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Exactly. The the NFL has uh, obviously has a lot on their plate coming up. Uh, hopefully, sometime in the near future, they get this problem solved because uh, it's getting quite ridiculous. Let's just put it that way. But, we'll uh, 
Just to wrap things up here, I want to uh, I want to thank obviously you Perez for joining me today. I know it's uh, well, thank we, you. We were going to have you in studio, but uh, well, frankly, I don't know how to make the machines work, so uh, we had to we had to improvise a little today. I spent forty five minutes last night, couldn't figure it out, and said, "I guess we're going to do things a little different today." So I appreciate you joining hey, us. Um, no problem, man. Thank you. Uh, next week, like I said, we'll have you back here. We'll have uh, hopefully a, a special guest with us. I've got to pull some strings and see what I can do, but uh, hopefully we'll have some fun next week. Especially with, okay. with I'm just going to tell you right now, we're going to talk football. Okay. Because next Saturday, uh, hopefully when we do the podcast next Saturday, that's the day before the NFL season starts. Technically, the NFL season starts a week from today or a week from Thursday uh, when, when Seattle opens up the season. But uh, – I digress. The, the The full bulk of the season starts next Sunday. Uh, I, like I want to. I, I I I do too. If you can't tell, I mean, I have. I like a shitty football team, but I still like football. If if not if not for if not for my fantasy football team, you know, I love my I love football. But uh, like I said, Perez, thank you. Uh, thanks, Fortune Studios, uh, for making a podcast sound good. Uh, thanks to to John. Obviously, over at the Gear Network for making a podcast happen. Thank you to every single one of you, each and every one of you listening to this podcast. Uh, we actually have some some breaking news in terms of the podcast. We are now officially on TuneIn Radio. So check out the Tune Facebook in. check out the Facebook page, facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast for more details on that. We are still like on. Say, I would like to say real quick, thank you, Serena Williams. Oh, God, what did you do? Nothing. I just want to say thank you. Oh, okay. I just wanted to double check. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. She was just uh, on my TV screen, so I had to say thank you. <laughs> got to calm down, man. Got to relax. So I'm good, bro. Uh, on, we're on, like I said, we're on TuneIn Radio. We're still on Stitcher Radio, still on iHeartRadio, still on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Like us on iHeartRadio. Uh, subscribe to us on Stitcher Whatever you got to do on TuneIn, subscribe, like us, throw a heart, leave a comment. I don't know, whatever. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, as you heard earlier in the podcast, at WolfSHC. Perez is MRLG Perez. Like I said, the Facebook page is facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast. Uh, like the Gear Network on Twitter, at GERE Network. And um, I guess the only thing left to say is Perez. Do you have anything else you would like to, to add to this podcast this week? No, man, I'm good. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's listening, checking us out, keep doing it. But more more stuff to come. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad that we that you are doing this again. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I knew I knew we would get it. I knew I, I just like I said, I knew we would get it figured out. I knew we would make it happen. It just took some time, but uh right, back I in agree. Back in the saddle again. We got the band back together. That's right. But uh, once again, thank you to Serena Williams. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ryan Wolf. You are not. Thanks again for joining us. We will try better next week. G-E-R-E network.com. Also iTunes, search Gear Network, G-E-R-E Network, and subscribe.